Yes. I mean, to some extent, now that, that brings up, that raises flags among like feminists, for example. I'm not saying a man has to be president. And I'm not even saying that, um, that John, we want our president to be John Wayne. And clearly that type of, the American conception of masculinity shifts with each decade, with each uh, sort of trend. Uh, you know, the movies that John Wayne made in the 50s would be are like a Paul like me, and I write about like masculinity. I care a lot about, they're just, they're just absurd. There's this one movie where he drags a woman by her hair. It's so, no one's saying that, you know, American presidents need to be John Wayne, but as I point out in the book, if you take, if you go back to the presidents since the Democrat, since the Republicans cemented their majority, and if, I remind, and of course I'm keenly aware that the, we could be at the dusk of the Republican majority, we very likely are. Um, but as I like to remind Democrats, that's because of mistakes by the Republican Party. And those mistakes are not the making of a new majority. You have to come up with your own message and reconnect with the very voters you left behind. If you look at the Democratic candidates for president, going back, let's say, to 1976, and you mold, let's run through them, Jimmy Carter, okay? Let's keep going. Jimmy Carter, Walter Mondale, Mike Dukakis, Bill Clinton, Al Gore, John Kerry. Now take those Democrats and mold them into one man, okay? This is a mental exercise. Now go back to 1976 and take all the Republicans. So we have Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush. Uh, we continue on to Bob Dole. We continue then to George W. Bush. Now take all those Republicans and mold them into one man. And, take, and, and, and try to forget, when you do these two types of men, now try to forget, if you're a liberal, all the things about those men that really dis you despise. And if you're conservative, try to forget all those things about the liberals you really despise. But you have two types of men, and what do you have? You have really the, the traditional archetype of manhood and the new man on the Democratic side. Now that is simplistic, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. And so why did that Republican man win? And Democrats always, so many in the liberal base, look back and say, oh, we really won in 2000. I believe they really won in 2000. I believe that the election was taken from them. But it should have never been that close. Al Gore, that race should never have been that close. That should have never been able to happen. So that's a Democratic mistake. You'll hear people point out, oh, if they would have shifted 70,000 votes in Ohio, Kerry would be president. That doesn't matter. You don't build a new majority by hoping to eke out a presidential election. So absolutely, I am saying that the Democrat, whatever it is, it's clear that the Democrats were portraying a different conception of, of manhood than the Republicans. And it's clear the Republicans won. Now it's not, it was not only on imagery, they had a message. And that message was based on policy and content. Um, and that matters just as much. And now we come into the present at the, what is very like the dusk of the Republican majority at a time when the Republicans are extremely weak and will very likely have John McCain as their nominee, um, which really is serendipitous for that party, um, though he faces great uh, pushback on the base. Uh, and we also are under the very real possibility that Hillary Rodham Clinton could be the Democratic nominee. And we're certainly on unknown territory with a female candidate. But there are two facts that I always point out with Hillary Clinton, two or three. One is the Democrats have not won a majority of white women since 1964. So the Democrats' problems with men transcended to many of their wives, I mean, passed on to many of their wives. Um, and there's a deep, there's reasons that why they've had problems with white women. Um, they have won more white women than the Republican Party, but they haven't won a clear majority. Um, they only won more white women than the Republican Party in 1996. So they didn't even in 2000 or 2004. So Democrats, the problem is that they, they win a majority of women because they do so strong with minorities, and they win a, a, a likely the plurality of white women. But that's nowhere near enough to compensate for their failings with men. Because if we go back to the 2000 race, which it was a very important race, because it was pre-September 11th, it was a seminal race in many respects, the Democrats won women by 2 3%, depending on the exit poll. But they lost men by like 27%. So they have such a white male gap with men. And that's a key term, white male gap. They have such a white male gap with men that they have to overcompensate with women. And even with Hillary Rodham, Rodham Clinton's very real potential to galvanize the base of women and to reach over to some independent women, all the polling of late shows that she has a lot of problems with men. And, uh, and 
she will likely offset many of the men, many of her gains with women, with men. And you're going to hear people say that it's because these men are sexist, but there's just no evidence for that. Because these men have had problems with Democrats for a long time, and those Democrats were white guys. So whether it's Barack Obama, Hillary, or Ron Clinton, the problems that these men have with the Democratic Party are far deeper than color and gender. Yet at the same time, the Democratic Party could, Party could not ask for better turf, for better terrain, to make an appeal to uh, the independents, which are predominantly men, more likely to be men than women.